All right, so welcome to the first of the maps from the PlayStation 2 port of Half-Life. Uh, specifically from the head-to-head -head mode, which was a deathmatch mode, basically, but just two people split-screen. Um, I actually have just... I'm not gonna... I'm gonna try to keep this brief, because I have a lot of stuff I want to dump real quick. I actually do have Half-Life uh, on PS2. Just got it not too long ago. Uh, so I don't really have much to say about that personally, but, you know... Uh, I was almost gonna record uh, some footage from that version as well, but that's just—it's too much effort, and I'm busy, and yeah, I'm an idiot. Anyway, so Office here is interesting. Um, first off, I gotta say that actually getting this to the, um, like from the PS2 disc to or the files, if you want to say, to uh, the actual game, like PC version here, was a little bit more interesting than I thought. To get actually ripping it from the disc wasn't that hard, but I didn't realize that that version of Half Life. The gold source engine on the PlayStation 2 uh, uses a new map format called PS2 instead of PSB. Um, apparently, it's just the way it renders the map is radically different. Uh, helps to reduce load times in that version, but obviously doesn't work here. And I actually thought, well, crap, I won't be able to play any of those maps then because they won't work here. So on a whim, just like pretty much assuming I'd be like shit out of luck, I went on Google seeing if there was a PST to PSP converter. And guess what there is? Someone wrote one in 2017, and it really seems to work just fine. Go figure. Anyway, Office is interesting for another reason, which I'll get into after I show it off, just to admit, like, break things up a little bit, and it's not me talking for 30 hours. So, the thing is, um, this is a very small map compared to, like, pretty much every other map you'd play on, like, the, the PC version in, like, Deathmatch. Um... And you're going to notice right away, a keen eye observer is going to be able to tell that this is actually taken directly from the single player uh, campaign, the, like the basic layout of this map, specifically from the chapter Office Complex, and even more specifically the map C1A2A. Um, it's obviously been cut out and greatly simplified geography-wise, which will lead into the next point I'll bring up later. It's not like the PS2 can handle, like, you know, more advanced, like the geometry of the original PC version. But there's another reason I think it's really simple in comparison to that. Uh, so yeah, anyway, if you start from here, there won't be anything of note in this little area. But if you go around here, you'll get to the couch. Uh, no secret slot like in the single player version as far as I'm aware, so that sucks. Um, there's a little like little circular hole thing over here we'll come to in a bit. Go this way, and if you go into this dark room, you get the shotgun. Which, by the way, the only two weapons you can pick up in this whole map are shotgun and the submachine gun. So it wraps around here. This is another way to get to that little area. If you go this way, you get some ammo. Nice on a little tray, trolley, har har. And this is where the map would kind of normally be, get, like, lead in, into the, like, from the single player version, but it's been cut off, of course. Get the SMG here. There's no SMG grenades, I might add. If you go from this hall, you can get back to that little circle area here. Or, alternatively, if you were to go straight here, is the map's other SMG spawn, and this, like, little area with, like, the little hide spot kind of reminds me of Data Core. Although with no, no grenades, you really can't be as much of a troll here as, like, you know, might want to be. So, yeah, just finishing up real quick, because this map is really basic, if you can't tell. Go in here, you get the other shot, like, another shotgun, and you can actually get up here, which wouldn't really have much of a strategic advantage, but, you know, for shits and giggles... You know, you can just, like, stand on this. And which is all fine and dandy. That's always very important. And, yeah, but pretty much it. If you were to... If I weren't to die there, I would have wrapped around here. So, this is basically the whole map. Um, despite being incredibly basic in terms of, like, you know, layout and weapons, it's actually quite fun. Like, you know, not the, the absolute best Half-Life Deathmatch map I've ever played, but actually, it's simplicity and, like, you know... How it's like, it has a very back-to-basics feel to it. I means it's a fun little romp for like, a, you know, a few minutes of like, you know, you know, really busy deathmatch, like, you know, work. So the thing is, I brought up something interesting I wanted to talk about. I might as well talk about it now real quick. Is that, if you don't know, there was also a attempted port of this game to the Dreamcast, which was damn near completed before it got cancelled. Um, unlike the PS2 port... The, the base release of it was never intended to have any sort of multiplayer support. They were thinking of having a second disc after release with, like, things like, you know, Team Fortress Classic and, you know, some other night, like, a few maybe mods of the game and stuff like that. 
you know, to take advantage of the online play of the Dreamcast, but that never saw the light of day. Now, if you dig around the Dreamcast files, first of all, the maps are PSP there, so that's nice. Um, but the interesting thing is, it actually has all eight of the original um, Half-Life Deathmatch maps that shipped with the game in 98 on there completely unmodified. So there's nothing interesting to be gleaned from that, like taking them and putting them in the, the actual PC game. But what's worth noting is that there's a map called DM underscore office, which is pretty much an exact copy of this with some very minor differences. I'd like, I, I have played through both of them and there, it's so minor that it's not even worth even showing. But basically I feel so the lighting is a bit darker in the PS2 version and, like, for instance, the shotgun is aligned differently. Like, it's uh, from here to here. But though that might be a difference in how the um, PS2 port handles weapon spawns. Basically, though, it's almost entirely the same. So it makes you wonder, like, if they had... I, I don't think, um, personally, that they ever planned a multiplayer mode to be launching with the half like, you know, the DC version. Rather, I think the, like, work on the PlayStation 2 version had already begun... Considering this only launched about f uh, three months after the planned release date of the Dreamcast version. So, or give or take. So it's probable that someone at Gearbox is just working on the multiplayer maps and just snuck it in here for, like, the DC version. Maybe test something? I don't fucking know. I just don't think that version ever had a multiplayer mode planned straight out. But yeah, anyway. So, you know, remember my, like, obsession with eight people? Well, despite the fact that, you know... This map was only really made for two people. I actually think it works great with eight people. It's really busy, but, you know, the, we the way the weapons work and just the way the pistol works, I feel like, you know, it actually is will work just fine with eight people. Um, obviously, 32 people's a no-no, as in the game actually crashed on me. So, yeah, don't do that. So, I but you know, back to the just a another thought, though, with how basic the uh, level, like, uh, kind of geometry is uh, in this map. Um... I wonder if they were over, they underestimated the processing power of the PS2. Because, um, the PS2 port, uh, some of the multiplayer maps are from the, like, the original version. Like, Stockyard, for instance, is in that version. And from what I recall, what little I played, it's pretty much like, you know, despite cutting out one of the corridors, um, it, like, geometry wise, it's almost 100% the same. So, I don't know if they just, like, you know, designed this map with the assumption that the PS2. In split screen mode, might not be able to handle like too much going on, or maybe they just weren't thinking of the aesthetics. I don't know. This is a weird little rant, but basically, it's just weird that this is so blocky because you know the system could actually do way better than this. Also, my aim is dog shit. It's probably for the best that there's no explosives here. Because, um, like, you know, having, like, 20, like, grenade, like, you know, SMG grenades getting lobbed all over the place probably wouldn't be the best time because you would just die immediately, basically. Like, I mean, on I know on some busy servers that's how it feels sometimes, but you know what I mean. The nice thing is, is that the SMG ammo is kind of spread around and that ends up being ammo for the pistol as well. So, you know, it's still an effective weapon here. You still basically have, full, like, you know, three weapons to choose from. Don't discount the uh, pistol here because, you know... Like, this little area here, you can see quite far down. And, you know, shooting someone from all the way over here will work just fine sometimes. Not that you really want to have the pistol as your main weapon, but still, you have some options. You know, I feel the PS2 version probably could have handled four players, like, split-screen, by the way. I feel they just didn't, because they didn't, like, bother, like, you know... Not a lot, a lot of people would have had, like, um... Multi-tap available, like, you know, for the, like, you know... The PS2 to like, enable four players, so maybe they just lazed out. Because I remember reading in like early like pre-release reports that they wanted to have four player split screen and bots. Eventually they just had two player and no bots. Which is a shame because you know Half-Life Deathmatch kicks ass. And I'm a freak for like, you know, a good deathmatch game on like, you know, split screen with like, you know, bots and stuff, so well that's a missed opportunity. I mean, we got time splitters on launch, like the PS2's launch. It's not all bad. Uh, yeah, Office. If you uh, take the effort to convert this to, from the PS2 PS2 to um, PC map format, uh, yeah, you'll have a pretty decent time, actually. Um, I don't know how many servos would be willing to do that, but hey, yeah, who knows? Try it.